Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, YouTube. How are you doing? ScottyD49 here once again with another installment of If You're New to the Hobby series. Uh, today, I'm bringing you the five worst hobby tools that you could use when starting Warhammer 40K. Some of these might surprise you and you might think, why the heck would I even use that? But trust me, I've seen people do it. And some of these might catch you go, what are you even talking about when you come to this one? Uh, can I just say, hear me out? Because you're gonna wanna choose some of the most cost-effective and efficient methods of doing stuff. So let's jump straight into it. The first one up is using scissors. Never, and I mean never, use scissors when you are taking models off the sprue. The reason why is what you'll end up having happen is that you'll probably take off uh, either chunks of the model when you're clipping them off with the pair of scissors, or you'll actually end up with flash, like small pieces of the actual attachment sprue left on your model, and you have to do the extra work to clean it up. Um, however, there are alternatives out there, and many hobby starter kits will come with something like these guys, which are hobby clippers. So they're flat beveled on one side, but they've got the, um, yeah, flat one side beveled on the other so that you're able to then get the flat side right up against the miniature. The bevel side goes up against the sprue. You can get a nice flat clean cut to start off with. And generally it's gonna save you time and it's gonna save you heartache if you do end up damaging a miniature by using the scissors. It's gonna be a lot easier, easier and a lot quicker too. So that's the first one. Number two is the mold line remover. Now, as you can see, it's quite a thick uh, piece of metal that you can use to remove your mold lines uh, off your miniatures. Now, it's not the best tool and I highly recommend not using it in, when you're starting. Now, there are gonna be some instances where it's useful if you've got large vehicle panels and it's pretty much straight and flat, you can use this thing and it's gonna be fine. But starting out, if you're assembling infantry, what you're gonna find is if you use the mod line remover, is that you're not gonna be able to get into those tighter spaces where you wanna remove the mold lines from like on the, the where the hand's gripping a gun or you know, on um, a sight or you know, around a head. Um, on the backpack as well, there's a, some quiet nooks and crannies on the Space Marine that you can get in. And it also won't work on organic shapes or very small uh, detailed pieces like a lot of the new Sisters of Battle Minis, uh, some of your Drakari um, Witches and Calvalite Warriors. Uh, they're just a couple of examples where the mold line remover will not work. Instead, I recommend one of two things. If you are of the age of being able to use a hobby knife, I'd highly recommend using one. You can get the blades and the, the handle pretty cheap and you can buy replacement blades as you use them. Um, however, if you're not, uh, for Australia, you've got to be uh, over the age of 16 to be able to own one. Uh, if you're not, then Hobby Files is the best uh, solution if you are under the age of 16. Uh, generally, they're going to be a lot easier to get into tighter places. You can generally get sets pretty cheap for around uh, 15 to 20 dollars from most hobby stores, uh, and they're usually designed for miniatures. They're going to be a bit of a finer grain. They're not going to do too much. Uh, damage to the miniature, they're going to be able to get into those tight spots depending on the file. And you get all different shapes and sizes. You get flat ones, you get triangular ones. You also get uh, round ones, oval ones. So you're able to get into all the places that you want. Sure, the hobby knife's going to be a lot more uh, controllable and easier to do uh, to get into some very tight spots, but the files also will do that job once you know how to use them. Number three is purchasing plastic glue without an applicator. So you may see in you know many hobby stores that there's heaps of different plastic glue varieties out there. If you're at a games workshop, they've got a couple of different ones there. You might find, and I'm gonna use an Army Painter one for example here, uh, that they've got a little bit of a, a top there, but it's quite wide when you think about it. Now, there's gonna be small places when assembling your models that you wanna get that in, and these type of nozzles aren't that controllable in terms of how much glue you're having come out of the nozzle, in terms of also 
the speed it comes out. So you could actually have a lot of glue end up coming out on the model and it goes onto part of the torso. If it's a space marine where you're trying to connect the arm, it'll come onto the torso where the Imperial Eagle is and you could lose detail there because of that plastic glue uh, coming in. You know, if you don't clean it up quick enough, even if you do clean it up quick enough, you could lose the detail. So instead, and I'm gonna use a Revel um, one here, is one of these guys. Now this is one that I use, I know Games Workshop also do their own, uh, and there's a couple of other ones, uh, a couple of other brands out there that do it too, but they've actually got this very small, and I'll make sure it's against my shirt here, you can see how small that applicator is, and how tiny uh, that hole would be. So that'll allow you to then go and be a lot more controlled with the amount of glue you're putting into places. You can actually get it into very tiny spots if you need to do repairs. If something's a bit loose and you don't necessarily want to get a massive blob of glue on it, you can use that applicator, get a small blob and you're all good to go. But also it means that a ton of glue is not coming out at once. It's not gonna ruin detail if you put just a little bit too much on there. And yes, if it's metal, it will clog and you have to clear it, but it's relatively easy. You just use a, an open flame. And now if you are you know, younger, get your parents to do that. Uh, I personally do it myself with like a barbecue lighter or, or a um, cigarette lighter is another way you could do it. Just make sure you're holding it in something else when you are clearing it in this method. Number four is plastic painting palettes. Now you might be thinking, oh yeah, no, they're, they're good to start off with. You know, you can just put PVA glue on top of them and then, uh, you know, let it dry overnight, peel it off, it'll be fine, everything will come off. No. I've never not once seen, whether it's Citadel, whether it's another company, um, whoever creates plastic paint palettes, I've never seen them properly cleaned in terms of using the PVA glue, getting it fully off now, if you get in there with a the scouring pad and soap and hot water and you just go at it, sure, you may be able to get it, but that's gonna be what, 10, 20 minutes worth of work when you wanna be back painting relatively quickly. My solution now, I've since upgraded to using a wet palette, but before I ever purchased a wet palette, this was how I painted and put paint onto a palette, is I actually used a kitchen tile. So by using a kitchen tile, what you can do, and you can see this is a bit of a smaller one. It's about uh, probably 15 to 20 centimeters square. Um, and so, you know, that's probably about five to seven inches if you're using inches uh, for reference. Um, what that allows you to do is you've got a lot more surface area than what some of these plastic pallets will have. Uh, so you're not having to clean it as often. It also means that you can just run it under hot water. You can use a scouring pad. Uh, if you want to soak it first to loosen up, you can do so, it won't damage the tile. Uh, and you can actually get it to the surface where it's pretty much close to brand new if it's a new one. Over time, like you will damage the surface, but it's a lot better solution than the plastic palette where it's gonna be you know, still have dried paint on there and you're trying to put new paint on there and you get little chunks that come off. All that kind of stuff is very frustrating if you put it onto a model and there's a chunk there and it's set in place and then you have to clean it up, redo the coat. So really a kitchen tile is the best starting point. Uh, if you're able to get your hands on one, I think, you know, most families, I know my parents, they had a lot because of renovations and such. If you're able to get your hands on, on one, do. If not, ask around. Ask around with your friends if they've just recently renovated their house or upgraded their bathroom and whatnot. See if they've got a spare set of tiles. Now make sure it's a fully uh, normal tile. Don't make sure it's like an off cut or anything because you don't want that sharp edge. You want just the fresh tile as is without it being cut or anything, otherwise you could cut yourself on it and we don't want that. And number five, Citadel painting handles or painting handles in general. Now you're probably thinking, what the heck are these in here for? But hear me out. The Citadel painting handles, at least here in Australia, for the standard one, they're $20 for, for just one. The XL ones are $21. Now, if you want to paint a batch of five models at a time, there's a hundred bucks. Now, I'm not saying that this is for, you know, if you later down the line want to get these to use, 
go for it. I'm not going to, you know, tell you not to. They're, they're pretty good. Uh, but when you're starting off in the hobby and you don't have a lot of money and you're looking for ways to do things, painting a model by holding it by its base isn't going to work. Trust me. Uh, you're going to want to put it onto something to actually paint it. And the alternatives, there's two of them that I've got for you. Um, for myself, the alternative I use is I use old paint pots with blue tack. Um, so as you can see, I've got them blue tacked onto the different pieces. Uh, and that's what I do. And I've done that pretty much since the start of my hobby. Um, finding paint pots to be able to do it with. Uh, over time, yes, I would need to swap because I wanted to use the paint, but I still used them. Uh, now I've got next to 20 to 30 of them sitting there that I, you know, sometimes you'll have to refit out the blue tack when it's really old and it's not sticky anymore, but you put the new blue tack on there and you're good to go. Uh, the other alternative I have seen is using cork. So cork um, wine bottle caps. Um, so they're kind of that, they've got that little bit that you can hold that's kind of angled at the bottom and then you've got that round piece at the top. Um, you know, not sure how blue tack would work on that, um, but the other ways you can also pin down into the cork to put a pin in and then pin that up. Um, but yeah, just really see if blue tack will work. But because you're going to be painting stuff and if you're using Citadel paints, they're a great size for it and a pack of blue tack shouldn't cost you more than five bucks. Uh, I know here in Australia it's about four fifty, depending on where you go. I'm sure in the states it's probably only about two dollars. You know, depending on wherever you go, it's going to be relatively cheap, and you're going to get a lot of it. So it'll last you a long time. Uh, and so you know, it's a lot cheaper to shell out. You know five, six bucks to get, or four or five bucks, I should say, to get blue tack uh, to use on all paint pots than to go and shell out a hundred bucks for five uh, Games Workshop painting handles. Alrighty, everyone. So that was the, uh, the worst five things uh, that you could use uh, when starting off with assembling Warhammer 40k miniatures. I hope that that kind of gave you some insight and some direction around what to use when building your miniatures for the first time and what to avoid and what not to spend your money on initially. Because, you know, you're gonna be wanting to buy new models, you're gonna to need to buy paint. So being able to buy the right gear and the right tools and the right glue and the right painting supplies to start off is really gonna be important because you know, you mightn't be buying it yourself, it might be your parents. So if you're able to say, no, this is something that I'm looking for, uh, you know, you're able to point them in the right direction, they're able to get the right stuff and you're good to go and it'll last you a decent while. Um, so yeah, I do stream uh, over on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash scottyd49. Uh, if you look down below in the description, you'll see what times I do. I do stream uh, Australian Eastern time. Uh, so down below, it'll tell you what times and days. Uh, but I'm a Warhammer 40k streamer. I do a lot of hobbying. I also cover events and I play live games as well. So you're welcome to come and hang out in stream. If you have enjoyed the video and you wanna see more content like this, feel free to drop a like subscribe to the channel and a comment down below as well if you think there is you know you've got a different opinion about what i've mentioned here feel free to share it below i'd love to hear your thoughts uh, as well as you know if you've got anything that i missed that you think should belong in the top five feel free to share that there as well but for now that's me and i'll catch you in the next video